depending on what part of Canada you're watching from this morning, it may be hard to believe that this month, yes, this month, you will be able to plant something outside in your garden. I can promise you that. I can't promise that it will grow or be beautiful, but you can plant something. <laughs> Our gardening expert, Antonio Valente, he is promising that it will grow. We've got some frost-hardy flower and vegetable options to get your garden started. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Kel. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, how? How are we getting into our gardens? It's April. Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't want anybody to jump the gun, but at some point this month, keep an eye on the weather and you can start getting your hands dirty, um, you know, sooner than you think. Okay, what are we looking for? What's our sign? Yeah, so um, I would say, you know, when temperatures are steadily above freezing, but I mean, like, most of the flowers I have got here today can handle a light frost, so you'll be okay. Start in your planters. I always say start in your planters, because typically people have their planters in a sheltered location. That's where you can probably start to get your hands dirty. Okay, when you say temperatures above freezing, do you mean both during the day and at night? Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, I would say so. Okay, so uh, let's start with our planters. What options do we have? Yeah, here? okay, so today we have a variety of, like I said, flowers that can handle a little bit of a late frost. So we'll start here. We have our everybody's favorite ranunculus. Oh, they're so pretty. Yeah, I grow a ton of those. Everybody loves those coming in, you know, a ton of different colors. Okay. Then here we have some hellebores. This plant, hybridizers have really gone to town with this plant recently. They've created so many different hybrids. Uh, it's a perennial, so it'll come back year after year for you. Amazing. It does appreciate a little bit of shade, though, so plant it maybe under a, a dappled uh, tree, dappled shade. They're so pretty, they look fake, but I, they're not, they're real. They're real, they're real <laughs> here, too. And then you have this. This is an old-fashioned favorite. This is Primula, or Primrose. Oh, yeah. Also a perennial, so it'll come back for you year after year. I have one of these in my, just one, one of these in my garden. Oh, well, stem. yeah, they're super pretty, uh, you know, and um, we'll come back for you year after year, like I said. So, totally. Yeah. What and are these guys called? These are pansies. Oh. Super frost hardy. I've had snow on these. In the Have past. you really? And yes, I swear. And they will bounce right back. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And then the tulip, of course. I mean, they're gorgeous. Yeah, and like, like I said, if last, um, last fall, if you missed the boat and you didn't get some bulbs into your ground, the garden centers have got them already grown for you. So we have tulips, we have daffodils, we have hyacinths. And tulips are often one of the first you see kind of poking out of the ground. Yeah, hey, they're yeah. beavers. Oh yeah, totally. And the daffodils too. Like these little daffodils, like how cute is that? That's just, that screams spring. Yeah. Okay, so from flowers to veggies, if you're hoping to have a bit of a, a garden you can munch on, what can we get started with? Yeah, so these are all uh, cool weather vegetables here. And in fact, they actually will appreciate the cooler temperatures. They tend to fizzle out during the heat of, let's say, July. Oh really? Yeah, so as soon as your soil is ready, as soon as you can work it, get these into the ground, sow them from seed. So they're really super easy to grow grow, super cost effective with a packet of seeds. I mean, like three or four dollars. And you know what I mean? You'll have a, a beautiful selection of, uh, of vegetables. Antonio, for someone, like I've never grown veggies before. I only ever stick to the flowers. How soon after we plant a seed are we starting to see little sprouts? Okay, so I was, uh, yeah, so radishes right here are super, super easy to grow. If you're a novice, that's where you can start. Uh, really good if you're impatient. You'll get a harvest within a month of sowing the seeds. Seriously? I, yes, seriously, yeah. That okay. quickly, yeah. Okay. And then we have, uh, you know, some lettuce here. We have some arugula. Arugula is my favorite. Oh, it's kind of lettuce peppery. Green. Yeah, yeah peppery. <laughs> so sow that in the spring because, it, like I said, loves the cool temperatures. And the other thing I do is I plant it again in the fall because it likes those cool fall temperatures also. Oh, so you can get a couple harvests. Yeah, you'll get a couple okay. harvests out of them. Okay. Carrots, kale, super mm. easy to grow. And in fact, kale actually tastes better when it's been hit with a little bit of frost. Really? Yeah. Is it yeah. like sugar? Is it's that a what bit, it It's a little bit sweeter, yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh, beets, also really easy to grow. Uh, peas, have you ever mm. had snap peas? I, my, I, like, I grew up snacking on these in my mother's garden. Homegrown yeah. snap peas mm. taste way better than store-bought. Oh, they're so good. And then we also have onions. These are called onion sets. If you go to your garden center and you ask for an onion set or a garlic set, this is what you'll find. And it's just a baby onion. You'll be harvesting onions by July. Really? This is just a baby onion? Yeah. That's all it is? Yep. Yeah. Cool. How big will this get? Oh, that'll get to a nice sized onion. Uh, similar to, to these beets. Right on. Yeah. Antonio, like every year, I'm like, you're going to change my garden. Well, and thanks, every year Kels. I'm hopeful. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, great to have you in. Thanks, Kelsey. We will be right back.